We've talked about it ad nauseum, we lost. They passed the rule that made these animals prohibited. What do we do next? Now, the bad thing is, is we've already been told that all monitor species could be on the hit list. They came up with their own way to do an evaluation of whether an animal can become invasive in Florida. That is contrary to every bit of science that's ever been done. It's just, it's just point because, you know, things like this are gonna be on the hit list. So we need you guys to band together because the fight has only just begun. All right, guys, you may recognize this face if you're a longtime lover of reptiles and perhaps if you were around in the mid 2000s watching National Geographic Wild, you would have seen this gentleman. Michael Cole is one of the Python hunters, but more important than being a uh, celebrity, right? Uh, he is also an avid herpetoculturist and he is a voice for people like you that enjoy these animals. Uh, down here in Florida, he's a member of US Arc Florida. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about his interesting species of monitor here. And we're also gonna talk about some of the recent rule changes that happen here in Florida. Um, Mike, man, really, it's been a long time since I've been able to get up here, so it's awesome to get up here and talk with you. Oh yeah, it's nice to have you, Ken. Thank you very much, man. And first things first, people are gonna wanna know, what, what are we looking at here? Uh, this is a really beautiful monitor lizard, and from my amateur eye with this species, it looks very similar to a mangrove monitor. Well, you know, originally they came in as mangrove monitors. Um, there were three of them originally. This is one of the original animals, and um, I just noticed some very different things about it. Okay, and, and su such as? Yeah, you know, the face, the neck, he's got this complete split under the neck where it goes from one pattern to another. Okay. Um, the tail was a little bit different, you know, especially as babies, they were more laterally compressed. You've got the facial and eye structures that are different. Um, just a lot of little things. Okay. Um, so we started doing some research and um, I got a hold of Wolfgang Baum and Hans Jacobson. And we sent some samples to them and some DNA, and we found out that they were DNA. They were just completely, completely different, different. Than, than Indicus. Wow. Um, and so, uh, turns out their closest relative is actually the Varanus uh, melinus. Uh, we call them quince monitors, yellow yellow monitors. Um, and this is a full-grown female. She's wow. uh, She came in as a baby. She's seven years old. Um, males get a little bit bigger. The biggest one male I caught... Uh, uh, when we're on travels over in Indonesia doing the the, the, um, the field research on these animals, the species, uh, was a, probably another nine inches longer than that. Okay. So this is, you know, when, when we figure out the, the breeding on these, and there's two of us here in the States that have pairs and trying to breed them. When we figure this out, this will be, and they don't bite. Really? They, don't bite. they, they, don't they bite. puff up nobody, and hiss a lot. Nobody in their native habitat we could find has ever been bit by one. Um, they, you know, they claw you, they scratch, they've got long, sharp nails, and they're a little flighty, but as you can see, right. you know, this animals, you know, she just wants to get away or hide, but they're never aggressive. Interesting. The animal, the biggest animal male I caught, we, we chased it up a tree. We had a couple of native kids with us. They climbed the tree. They had it out on a branch. It jumped down into a group of guys. We had it pinned. They missed it. Okay. <laughs> uh, my, my good friend Ivan was there. It went right through his arms. Oh my I'll gosh. I have to give him crap about that. It ran across the ground over a cliff. I went over the cliff with it, not a real cliff, you know, about 12 feet. Okay. I went over after it, it hit the ground, went back up the cliff, found a hole in the rocks. I went back up, grabbed his tail as it went into the rocks, held onto it for a half an hour <laughs> till I had nothing left in me. I mean, yeah. my muscles were just gone. Yep. And I thought, you know, if I do get this thing out, it's gonna just- Nail you. Chew me up. Yep. But I thought, you know, this is, we got to get this, you know, information, find out if it's male or female, all this stuff. So I gave it one last go and I pulled and I got him and he didn't even try to bite me. No way. After all that. After all that, that stress. That was yeah. guaranteed, you know. <laughs> nailed, but, especially a monitor. Yeah. So this will be, you know, once we get these guys figured out and captive breeding, this will be um, probably the best monitor species as a pet that you could get. Well, it's not large. Yeah. It's got a great temperament, yep. and it's it's an attractive animal as well. Yeah, and this is a this is a you know she's kind of got this bluish uh, hue, yeah. hue kind of silverish blue. Some of them are very they still have they all have about the same colored heads. Some of them are very yellow spotted, yeah. and some of them are more blue spotted, especially females during their ovulation cycles because we've had 
We had several clutches of eggs, just they've been infertile so far because so, the males are young. So we've been doing all this talking about them. What's the name of this animal? Varanus coli. There you go, named man. After, named after the him. Coli family. Yep. There you go. Very cool. Um, what kind of habitat are you finding these animals in the wild? Uh, these guys come from a very dry, arid climate. Really? Um, you know, it's 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 southern Indonesia, so you get wet and dry seasons. But we've been there mostly in the dry season, and it's a lot like, um, almost like a desert. A rocky desert, really? volcanic uh, land, but again, they have the rainy season. Um, we found blue tongue skinks there, lots of real small, really cool like moors geckos and things like that. Um, the habitat is just rich and full of, of wildlife because it's it's an island in the middle of nowhere. It gotcha. takes three days to get there from Miami. So, what? so yeah, you got to take a plane, and another plane, and another plane, and another plane, and another plane, then a boat. Then another boat, then another boat, and then you're there. Oh, it's really cool! Fantastic! It's dude. about the. Coolest. And I thought Australia was a bad trip. Nah, no, it's 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 fantastic because, you know, you're taking your life in your hands at every step of the way yeah. once you get there. That's amazing. But man. you know, once you're there, I mean, it's just pristine wildlife and it's just pristine beauty and you know the birds and and everything about these places is so cool. And the natives that some of the natives don't even know. We went to this one village. And we're telling them, you know, we're looking for these monitors. Have you ever seen them? Nobody in the village had ever seen them. Wow. And the same day, we went down to the trash pile, you know, where they throw their leftover fish because they use most of their fish. So right. it's bones and a few little scraps here and there. Wouldn't you believe it? That's where we found the first ones, right on the edge of the village. That's incredible. And then we found them in the trees all around the village. The kids ran around with us all day catching them. That's so just, fun. What a blast, though. Yeah, you know? that must have been amazing. Yeah. So, you know, um, this is just a really cool species. And... You know, you do a lot of work with monitors. You love monitors. And um, as you guys know, we've recently had uh, some rule changes with tegus and iguanas here, as well as the already listed conditional species, um, you know, of the Burmese python, rock pythons, and of course, retics and some of the larger constrictors. Um, we've talked about it ad nauseum. We lost, okay? Um, they passed the rule that made these animals prohibited. What do we do next? Well. The good thing is, is with this passing of this ban, uh, the commission did ask for technical technical advisory groups going forward to make new regulations. Uh, the bad thing is, is we have already been told that all monitor species could be on the hit list. We've already been told that there are some other things that they're looking at. So, you know, we know croc monitors, we know water monitors, they're, you know, bigger animals and, and they're going to want those uh, regulated, regulated to some degree. Yeah. To some degree. I don't necessarily think that anybody doesn't think that there should be some good regulation, but you know, the last three years, all we get is bans. Right. And that's kind of scary. You know, we had a commission that passed the ban on the yellow anacondas um, and the other anacondas that don't even exist with bad science. You know, they, they, they came up with their own way to do an evaluation of whether an animal can become invasive in Florida that is contrary to every bit of science that's ever been done. They say that they did it with the University of Florida, which is true. There was one lady who they worked with at the University of Florida and they come up with the bad science. And so they're using that bad science to get the desired results that they want to say that all of these animals are high risk in Florida and should be banned, you know? And it's dis it's disappointing because, you know, things like this are gonna be on the hit list. There's no reason for that. Right. No reason whatsoever. It, now, I will say, over the years, we as an industry have had some really bad people, especially in the 70s and, and 80s, that didn't do stuff right. And, you know, it's our job as, you know, a guy who informs people about wildlife all the time, it's my job as a board member of USR Florida to make sure that those people don't continue to make us look bad. And it's your job, your job to make sure that that happens too. Yeah, absolutely. So when people are doing things wrong, we need to get with them and fix them. Gotcha. Well, that's one of the things I'm always talking to you guys about, you know, how, you know, I overbuild the caging, make sure the husbandry is correct, but more importantly, you know, do things by the letter of the law, never release any of your animals uh there are so many places that are reptile sanctuaries that people can go and put their animals uh fish and wildlife does amnesty days if you do live in florida we really need to kind of pull together as an industry of responsible reptile keepers because as michael just said we are going to lose the privilege and right 
for us to keep these animals. So many bad things will come of that. I think that without allowing young people to have their bearded dragons, without having a pet turtle, you further distance them from the natural world. You and further all remove God is, them. is TV and yes. video games. And that's, you know, I, I've watched this younger generation that grows up with just video games and TV, no animals and no wildlife and no running through the woods. My son and I go to the Everglades. We go running around. We go out, we look at cars. We go to yeah. stuff outside. And you know, we run around our own front you know, yard. I and mean, we got acres and acres of land here. We go out and we look at the gopher tortoises. We you know, catch anoles and whatever. We just enjoy nature as it is. These kids aren't going to get that, and that's scary. The other thing is a lot of these animals, believe it or not, will suffer because if there's not a commercial viability to them, um, I, I, I fear that out of sight, out of mind to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, when you ban animals, uh, you're going to create a, a class of people that are now criminals. What are they going to do with those animals? That's what's concerning to me. Well, I mean, I, 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 I hear frustration of a lot of people that are saying, you know, I'm not going to let them have my animal if we're gonna, they're going to euthanize it. This is an animal. This is my baby. I raised it up from a kid. You know, I want to say don't release your pets. It's not healthy for the animal. I, I know people think that that's the best thing for them sometimes. It's not. Mm. I also understand they don't want them euthanized. There are ways to get them out of the state. Even if you have these animals illegally, which if you do, come on, do the right thing. Yeah. You know, I, I don't like the laws, but we Would need to follow, follow the laws. Absolutely. And especially with this new ban passed with all these 16 species, they're giving us 90 days to liquidate your animals um, out of the state or out of the country. Um, if you if you have a legitimate need for an exemption, I am quite certain if you go to the upper level management and it's a legitimate concern, they're going to work with you if you need a couple of extra days or months. Um, you know, but you love your animals. I get it find a new home for them that's not in Florida. Um, we don't know what's coming up next. We don't know, USR Florida is looking at, at legal remedies uh, for some of this stuff right now. Um, but you know, this all happened last night. So we're all yeah. kind of in a- It's fresh. Wow, you know, yeah. I, that's exactly the way I feel. Wow, I can't believe they actually did that. Yeah, it's, it's very, you know, the way I feel is I don't think those animals necessarily should be pets for everyone. Um, not for everyone, no. Not for everyone. But I do feel that what was in place was a good system. And I think through this, you know, they kind of did a little fear mongering, you know, that they that these animals can make it all the way to Maryland. And that's just not true. This is a, a very localized problem in South Florida. That being said, those animals don't belong in the wild out there. No. And there were extenuating circumstances because he mentioned in the 70s and 80s, they were unscrupulous people that were involved in these businesses and had less to do with the captive care of the animals. They were just flipping animals. You mm -hmm. get them in, you flip them. They had inadequate caging. The caging was, of course, we all heard about Hurricane Andrew, what that did. But nowadays, I think what is more sensible is we work with Fish and Wildlife, USR Florida and Fish and Wildlife. Um, I know that they did make some caging requirements that are, some people think they're draconian, but you and I were talking and you know, to be yeah, honest, I'm building a twenty thousand dollar monitor cage right now. Yeah, and I and don't have any rules about the way to build it, but I'm already going to use the new regs. That's what I'm going to do as well for I, Slinky's cage. I figure cage. it's coming down the road. Right. And you know what? Like you Let's said lead earlier, by example. Overbuild exactly. if you're going to build because exactly. these don't belong in the wild. And I love my lizards. I raised these things. These are six foot lizards that I raised from hatchlings, and I'll be. Forget about the monetary value. I'll be damned if I want them loose. Right, exactly. You know, I'd be killed by the neighbor's dog or It's whatever. all about responsibility. Yeah. So what we're hoping is, this is what we're hoping for, folks. Um, I would like you to go in the description below to US Arc Florida. There's going to be a link for you to follow. Can you guys join up? Become a member. Become a member of US Arc, uh, the national organization, because they are actually, you know, fighting some of this legislation that in some ways feels like prejudice against reptile keepers. So we need you guys to band together because the fight has only just begun. We may have lost a little bit of a battle, but there's more coming. And if you guys want to keep these animals, if you love being able to keep reptiles as pets, you got to make your voice heard. And to be perfectly honest, it's going to take dollars because lawyers aren't cheap. Yeah, unfortunately, that's, you know, I'm one of those guys that always hated it when people came around asking for donations. Yeah. But now I'm that guy. And I look, you know, 
None of the board members have ever taken a dime in compensation for anything we've done uh, with US Art Florida. We have worked, some of us, 60 and 70 hours a week on top of our regular jobs to make sure things happen. This last week, we've had multiple board meetings and the, the phone doesn't stop dinging between the board members trying to help you guys, help you guys figure out what's the next steps. And uh, in reality, we've already spent well over a quarter million dollars on attorney's fees, and we have the best attorneys in the state. And we don't know where this is gonna go. We may be filing lawsuits for detrimental reliance, uh, where people were told, you know, two years ago by the commissioners and by uh, Eric Sutton's, under Eric Sutton's direction, Kip Froelich, that you're gonna be able to keep these animals, and we're not gonna ban them, and they just did, mm. two years later. So, you know, anybody that invested a, a, a crap ton of money in caging and, and, and buying animals in the last two years, when they were told they were gonna be able to keep that stuff, you know, I'm not really one of those guys who likes to hire an attorney and sue, but really there's kind of sort of almost nothing no else option. to do yeah. right now. Um, like I said, we have attorneys that are looking into everything. We'll have a game plan of what moving forward real soon. But right now, all I can say is, you know, if you got a few extra bucks, send it to US Arc Florida or US Arc. Let us continue to do what we're doing behind the scenes. Um, and you know we're gonna fight for you every step of the way all the time because cool. we're herpers too right and and just to end this thing on another note is we're fighting for the ability to keep these animals but we are also very passionate about the natural world and the environment um so we are going to be very responsible there's already you know us arc is already talking about things to do as far as caging and maybe more of a cohesive uh you know uh bylaws that that we all adhere to as an industry yeah and i think that's very important going forward to be taken seriously i'm also personally going to be looking into joining the zaa um any of these accredited uh institutions are going to be paramount for moving forward to keep animals at least here in florida that's it man i appreciate your time i know you're busy um i'm stoked that we got to see this animal that is described by you i'm glad you didn't go over you know a really tall cliff <laughs> and uh, I understand about what it's like to be in the field and just to grab these animals and just be able to, to see them in their natural environment, even if it is a garbage pit at the end of a village. But uh, all right, man, that's it. We are off. Uh, we got more videos coming down the pipe, but really take this one to heart, guys, because this one is for everyone, everyone that loves these videos. So um, that's all I got to say. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate thanks, it. And thanks to that little gal right there. See ya. We'll see you later.